Hey internet friends, when you were a child, what was your favorite television show to watch? Think back, think far back. Did any of these programs consistently feature your favorite superheroes and characters engaging in sexual, violent, anxiety inducing, or any other form of overt degenerate behavior on the regular? Mm -hmm. While subliminal messages have undeniably been utilized in TV programming in the past, with children's shows being no exception, what's occurring on YouTube right now is unlike anything we've ever seen before. Being that the themes are neither subliminal nor even attempting to be subtle. These videos being produced and curated for children reach millions of children whose parents handed them the mobile device or the tablet and left the internet to teach their children colors or how to count because the tablets keep the children occupied on a long car ride and they keep them well behaved and silent while they're in a nice restaurant. And heck, they keep them entertained so mama can have just a few minutes of peace and quiet to herself because it's been a long day. And I'm not judging you. I'm not telling you how to parent. I'm just saying, all jokes aside, if you're a parent, you might want to pay attention to this video. Because predators are successful when their prey is either unaware or in denial. And while it might be upsetting to view some of this content being targeted at your children, it's absolutely essential that you do. An opportunity has been presented with the rise of parents allowing things like television and the internet to babysit their children, a blind spot, if you will, for predators to flourish. Imagine that your three or your four-year-old child was watching some kind of educational YouTube video on the YouTube Kids app, and after watching the approved video that you queued up for them, this video autoplays next unbeknownst to you. But you're a good parent and you look over there for a quick peek at what your child is watching and you see Mickey, Mickey Mouse on the screen. Mickey can't be bad, right? Mickey is a trademark character after all. Surely Disney would be pulling down these videos of their characters being represented in such a negative light and acting out the most vile situations while the content maker or the YouTube channel owner is earning thousands a day off of YouTube advertising revenue. Disney should be calling for these videos to be taken down. So why aren't they? What's even more curious is the use of repeated themes and characters that seem to transcend a vast array of languages and cultures. Characters like Elsa, Spider-Man, and the Joker are used within the videos, the thumbnails, the keywords, and titles and appear either as adults in costume or in animated form, acting out situations like kidnapping and bondage, violence, gore and injections, belly inflation, pregnancy and abortion, simulated sexual acts, alcoholism, an emphasis on urination, scat, and dismemberment, as well as violent acts like shootouts and even murder. Like I said before, oftentimes there are actors featured in the videos, and sometimes those actors are children being made to cry on camera or participate for the purpose of the YouTube channel generating revenue. Let's not get it twisted. With these videos receiving millions to hundreds of millions of views per upload, that's some major money being made by both the content creator and the YouTube platform. And since their videos are highly viewed and engaged with, those videos are the ones suggested after your child finishes up with their pre approved video of Elmo or Dora or Peppa the Pig, whatever. It's been speculated that quite a few of these channels utilize a botnet or a click farm service to get initial views so they can then become a recommended video. But certainly a good portion of these views are authentic. In the last few weeks with this topic abuzz, people are pretty split on the motive of some of these channels in uploading children's content with these inappropriate themes. The first theory, and notice I said theory, I did not say fact, is that these content farms or channels with multiple syndicate channels uploading the exact same content on each, on each channel are just using YouTube as a cash cow. These people see what earns money and others have copied the format. In a video uploaded by comedy YouTubers H3H3 last year, they pointed out that one of the most popular superhero channels with questionable content is actually produced by two pranksters, 
Ethan and Mo Bradbury. But if folks are just making a quick buck off of YouTube, then why do the disturbing reoccurring themes persist? That question leads us to the second popular theory, being that it is no accident or coincidence that we have videos targeted at various age groups under two years old, all the way up to middle school age, featuring cartoon characters performing vile acts, ultimately desensitizing children to an array of age-inappropriate behavior like being kidnapped, binge drinking, shooting people, performing abortions, and even committing suicide. A lot of these videos display anxiety-inducing and traumatic events for young minds, leading some to believe that the goal is learned helplessness, a condition in which a person suffers from a sense of powerlessness arising from a traumatic event or a persistent failure to succeed, thought to be one of the underlying causes of depression. In learned helplessness, it leads to behaviors like giving up without even trying, and perhaps ultimately a nihilistic outlook on life. In this theory, all roads lead to MKUltra with a facelift, designed specifically for the touchscreen generation. We put all these things together, then spread on another layer of theory, and we move on to our third theory, which is that the content is both generated for children and for perverse adults. We have children being groomed in the videos and by the videos as well as groomers partaking in the viewership, with people who subscribe to this theory pointing at a series of codes being associated with the video content and correlating to the comment section. In one of the live streams I caught while editing this video, the children's YouTube channel who was live streaming listed their Twitter page, and their Twitter page was tweeting out links to porn websites. That's weird, right? Am I the... Am I the only one who finds that weird? But let's move on to the fourth and the final theory, which is, as far as I know, a really graceful original theory. As people are canceling cable and ditching their TVs and droves, the traditional cable networks are on YouTube waiting to capture the audience in more ways than one. This speaks to every demographic beyond children. But what if channels like the ones featured in this video were put in place to showcase how dangerous unregulated entertainment could be. We have unregulated cartoons and children's shows being circulated on YouTube, and they're featuring scat fetishes, murder, and child abuse. Do you see where I'm going with this? Perhaps that's why Disney, who probably has taken a significant financial hit with people canceling their cable, perhaps that's why they haven't taken down these videos or claimed them for copyright. That is pure speculation, absolutely not rooted in any fact at all. But let me know your thoughts, and as always, I look forward to your comments. And before I close out this video, I just want you to know that while all this information is disturbing and the videos are disgusting, it's an easy fix if you're a parent. Just screen what your child is watching. Create playlists of pre-approved videos. Don't be naive and don't let your child roam the internet unsupervised. And if you are looking for more information on this topic, I've listed some really good videos in the description which I found to be informative. So let me know if you have any other solutions. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel on Patreon, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye!